in the UK, we've been uh, looking in at some detail over a period of time, over about 20 years, at nursing home care. And I think the disappointing thing is that very little has actually changed. So we measured it by watching, uh, observing people for six hours in the day to look what they were doing every five minutes, how, uh, what their well-being was like, what their activities were like. And actually the profile was really distressingly bad. People were spending a lot of daytime period of sleep, a lot of it in distress, very little of it um, actually doing anything constructive or engaging with other people. Uh, and in 40% of the care homes that we actually looked at, people were spending less than four minutes a day engaging with anyone else during that period. So it feels, firstly, this is quite shocking, but even more shocking that despite a whole load of policy initiatives over the last 20 years, actually this hasn't changed at all. And I think it's time that we stop sort of pretending we're doing something about it and actually really do something about it. One of the big problems I in nursing homes is actually how you train staff properly. And if care hasn't always been as good as it could be, it sort of turns into bashing the care homes and criticising the staff. Whereas actually, you know, a lot of the time they're doing a very difficult job. Uh, a lot of the staff providing the hands-on care are on a, a sort of a, a minimum or a living wage. Um, they're not giving proper training or support, so we're asking them to do an almost impossible job. And I think what we have to do is train them better. And certainly one of the initiatives to do that has been something we've been doing in the UK called WELD, which is a, a sort of big care home training programme that we've run across a couple of large uh, randomised clinical trials and really demonstrated that it does help staff understand what they're doing better, but also it improves the quality of life for the residents with dementia, it reduces their psychiatric symptoms, it reduces the use of drugs, uh, and actually it even reduced mortality um, by increasing positive en engagement with constructive, enjoyable activities. So I think the, the frustrating thing is that we've got the technologies to make this better, we're just not implementing them. I think it would be very helpful that there was it was mandatory to actually have proper good quality training. Because certainly uh, in the UK it's mandatory to have training but there's no requirement for that to be evidence based or of good quality and what often happens is it's very cheap and short training that isn't actually uh, helping address the issues. So I think the requirement for mandatory high quality training um, that's approved through some you know, more rigorous process would be very good. Um, I think one of the other challenges is how we actually monitor the quality of care and one of the one of the kind of shocking things in a way was that of the 24 care homes where we did this detailed evaluation and showed that all but two of them were in need of much or radical improvement but all of those care homes uh, had been rated as adequate or good through the uh, through the CQC process which is the the monitoring process of quality in the UK and I think that's partly because that process focuses very much on whether for people's physical health needs are being met, whether they have pressure sores, whether they're having food choices, you know, whether proper paperwork is being completed for care plans. So all of those things are important, but the problem is it doesn't capture what the real experience of the person with dementia is living in the care home. And I think you know, that process needs to reflect that those social and emotional needs as well as the physical care needs.